Hey, this is Dr. Aldewan Tart, psychologist, minister. I help people get the relationship advice that they need to move towards marriage and also give you the tools that you need to stay married because we know in today's culture, it is hard. You need more tools than ever to stay married and not only married, but happily married. Today, I want to talk to you about conflicts in marriage. You're going to have them. And this is what trips up a lot of couples is that they don't have a conflict plan. They don't know what they're doing. What I want to do today is I want to alert you to three types of conflict patterns. I want you to determine which pattern you have in your relationship. And then I want you to work out your issues. Okay. First thing I want you to know is that it is okay to have conflict. Conflict is necessary. You need to, you need to hear from both parties. It's 50%. 50% they need to come together the same way as business, the same way as sports. Put their heads together. Like it says in Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10, two is better than one because they get better return for their labor. If one falls down, the other can pick them up. So you, you get the gist of this. We have to be able to talk about our differences and be able to come up with one solution. Two people, different opinions, one solution, the same as a corporation, the same as a team. You need that conflict in order to make the best decision. However, the three types of, of conflicts that you can have. Three styles, rather, of conflicts. I want you to figure out which one you have, and then I'm going to tell you the worst one. You absolutely need to throw in the trash because it's going to kill your marriage. Number one, there's the pursuer pursuer dynamic. This is where both of you want to talk about conflict. You drive right towards that conflict. A good example would be, hey, you know, a husband comes home from work at 7.30, sees that there's no food on the table. He immediately goes to his wife and says, babe, what's up? There's no dinner. It's 7.30. I got home. The wife turns immediately to the husband and says, you know why there's no food on the table at 7.30? Because I had to pick our kids up from school. I had to pick up one from karate, one from football, and one from aftercare. And I just got in 15 minutes before you. All right. So how is it going to be time for food to be made? All right. That's necessary conflict. They need to be able to talk about the system and how they do marriage. Maybe they're too busy. Maybe they need to hire a nanny if, if you have the money. Maybe they need to prepare meals on Sunday. I don't know, but that's necessary conflict so that both people can get what they want. The husband gets a, a meal. The wife gets some property, some equity. We're picking up the kids. It's the chores. And the kids, they get to eat before 830, you know, so that's a win-win. Now, here's the warning, all right? If you're going to be in a pursuer-pursuer relationship, you have to have self-control. There are a lot of people out there that are reckless. The way you bring up an argument is reckless. You have to start soft. If you start rough, it's going to end roughly. You must have self-discipline, and you must do things. I'm going to talk to the men. You must do things so that you can be able to have a conversation without exploding. If every time you have a problem, you're critical, you're defensive, you start strong, you throw things, you shut down, you break things, you're aggressive, then you're not equipped to be in a relationship and you need to work on that. You need to work on your self-discipline, yoga, prayer, meditation, exercise, whatever you need to do to gain self-control. Number two is the pursuer-avoider dynamic. The pursuer-avoider. One of you pursues the conflict, the other one avoids it. That is the, probably the dynamic in our marriages. I'm quick to pursue my wife would like to avoid. It doesn't mean that one is better than the other. It's just a dynamic. So a good example would be, say you're walking into the movies and then one of you gets a text and the text says, you know what, your kids you know, uh, have gotten in trouble and they're in jeopardy of failing. And you want to talk about it with to your partner before you go in the movie. All right, we need to figure out because I thought you were on top of this homework thing. You know, how are they failing? And I'm getting this message on my phone. And then the other partner wants to say, hey, you know what? Let's just watch the movie. We haven't had a chance to go on a date in weeks. Why do you want to ruin it by being able to talk about something that we can handle at home? OK, so when you have that, you can see how it can present a problem. Now, all you need to do is be able to in advance, be able to talk about when to pause, when to pause and when to pursue. Here's a warning, and this is for you ladies, since I talked to the men earlier. You, you cannot disappear in your relationship. You cannot be this pleaser. You cannot be overly accommodating to where my job is just to make sure my man, my husband doesn't want for anything. You know why? Because it's not going to work. You're going to be passive aggressive later. You're going to file for divorce later because you've gone years without having your needs met, but you never expressed it because you were too busy avoiding conflict. And when you bring it up, you're going to blindside the man because you never ever told him how you were feeling. And you just open up all of a sudden. I haven't been happy in two years three years. I haven't, uh, and this happens a lot of times when the kids go off to school, you see a lot of wives file for 
divorce, empty nest syndrome because they realize I'm just staying in this for the kids up until 18, but you don't meet my needs, but you never told him your needs. Speak up, have necessary conflict so you can adjust. And then number third, number three, this is the worst type. This is the part you need to throw away, okay? Avoider, avoider. Okay, that's the worst type. So imagine a husband that's feeling, you know what, he's feeling neglected. He feels like his wife cares more about work, more about kids, more about mom, more about church, more about social media. And she feels, he feels like he's second fiddle to everyone. But he's not saying anything about it, okay? You can imagine what kind of doors that opens to affairs, to shutting down, to passive aggressiveness, to hopelessness, helplessness, powerlessness, drinking, alcohol. You can see where this could go because he feels like there's no power to change it, no need to say anything. And then can you imagine the wife that is feeling like, you know what, the only time I get good conversation is when I'm talking to other people. So I load my schedule up by talking to mom. I talk to my friends. I go to the church. I go places where I'm validated and where I'm appreciated. Can you imagine what happens when you have that dynamic and neither one of them is talking, but both of their needs are legit? Both of their unmet needs are legitimate? All right. That's, that's, that's why you have to get a system. That's why you need something extensive. This is why you need professional training. I know a lot of people give advice, but that's where I distinguish myself is I'm going to give you the actual tools actual tools you need to create a conflict plan to save your marriage. What we know is about, about relationships. If you don't have a five to one ratio of positive to negative, your relationship feels like it's not going to work. And we want it to feel good. God made marriage to, to feel good. It's not going to always feel that way, but he wants it to feel good at times. So you have the oxygen that you need. Sometimes you do need conflict, but so it can be worth it because two is better than one because they get better return for their labor. I'm Dr. Tart. Again, I help people get the relationship advice they need to move towards marriage and then the tools they need to stay married. All right? Stay married. God bless. Take care.